Hey my friends, how's it going? Today I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of things I think are important for people who are um, applying soon for fellowship or even residency training. Good luck for everyone. Just two days ago, one of my younger colleagues asked me how can they successfully match into their subspeciality training of interest. First thing is if you are interested in applying to anything or achieve anything in life, you have to think big picture downwards. Means if I want to match, I have to look at the criteria for matching first, right? So I have to have scores, UCMLE scores or the boards. I have to have personal statement. I have to have letters of recommendations. I have to work on my own CV and tailor it in the way that will make me the most competitive version of myself. So these things has to be looked at separately, not as a whole, but to look at the big picture first. So I want to match, then try to narrow down my vision. Wait, my first priority right now is to work on my CV, make sure my application is as good as it could be. Then I want to work on my personal statement. Wait, my personal statement will take more time to work on because I don't know what I'm going to talk about. So I have to give more time to this. Third is my letters of recommendations. Wait, I don't know if these writers will have time to write my letters of recommendations or not. And for each of them, you have to specify and allocate time and give enough time frame to people to be able to do it for you. Second thing I want to bring to your attention is there is no perfect time to do anything. If you postpone things to do when, whenever you have the perfect moment or the free time or the uh, circumstances that you are looking for, to be able to achieve what you want to achieve, probably that perfect moment isn't gonna happen. What I'm trying to say is you have to create your own perfect moment. You see, life is not easy. You'll always get distracted. You'll always have a lot of responsibilities. You'll have a lot of interruptions, a lot of um, unfortunate circumstances, you know, but only dedication and determination will pay off later on and make it fruitful and worthwhile. I learned this throughout my career early on before even coming to the U.S. and being able to match and matching for a subspeciality in pediatrics. It's not easy and it's going to be always challenging to find the time like for example right now i'm trying to study for the boards it's not gonna happen because residency is hard but if you have dedication and you can mark your schedule or have a reminder or your phone or something like that and have in your mind that i have to do this because i'm a doer not because this is an obligation on me in my head, I think about um, a pediatrician. So for me, passing the boards isn't an option. <laughs> That's why I have to take full responsibility. James Clear is actually talking about this in uh, his book, Atomic Habits. It's a very, very good book, how to create new habits and get rid of old ones. And he's talking about the simple concept of changing your wording in your head. And instead of saying, I have to do this, you say, I gotta do this. And, and instead of, I do something, you say, I'm a do In my head, I say, I'm an early riser, rather than saying, I wanna wake up early. Implementing it as character for you, as a definition of who you are, makes it way easier because it's like your name. You don't have an option for it, you know? So if I say that I always arrive to work on time, so I'm gonna say I'm a punctual person.
I wouldn't say I have to come on time, if that makes sense. Same thing for having deadlines and for the application process for the match, paying attention to these time frames and milestones and being able to define them and say that I'm a punctual person, I have to do it on time. It's gonna make the big difference in being ready on time and and successfully matching. Another thing to think about, and again, probably soon we'll talk about each of them separately, but when you are thinking about applying, you have to think about the details of all of them. Like for instance, when you are thinking about getting letters of recommendations, have you asked who are you gonna get letters from? Have you notified them? Did you reach out to the people who you think gonna write you strong letters? What is your bullet points you want to make sure they remember about you? Try this. Whenever you're doing a rotation in some um, specialty that you're interested in, try to reach out to one of the attendings early on, whenever you're starting. Hey, Dr. X, I'm really interested in pediatrics. I'd love it if you can keep a close eye on me and if I overperform, I'd appreciate it if you can write me a strong letter of recommendation. Don't feel bad about this. And actually, from a senior perspective, it's easier to give me a heads up early on because with all the respect, we deal with a lot of students all the time, in and out. But why I remember you? Because you're interested in pediatrics? A lot of med students will say that, but if you mean it and you approach me early on, I look at you differently and later on I'll have no problem either writing you a letter or telling you, hey, I'm so sorry, I don't feel like I can write you a strong letter, you know? Things like that will make you stand out early on because you don't want a generic letter. Generic letter will actually hurt you more than it will benefit you. You want a strong letter that can put you on top of your game if that makes sense. Next point I wanna bring to your attention is try to listen to everyone who preceded you during this journey. If it doesn't help you, it's not gonna hurt you, you know? It's smart not to reinvent the wheel. See what happened to people previously, who matched, who didn't match, who matched in their first choice, who matched in their last choice. Things like that will help you because Everyone has a unique selling point in their application and their CV and you want to understand which is yours and how to sell yourself in the best way ever. The last point for this video, my program director actually advised me when I was writing my personal statement and I didn't know what to write about. She told me, you know what, I want to read in your personal statement, something that is not in anywhere else in your CV. She told me, and it's, it sounds silly, but um, it was actually a smart thing to do. She said it's called personal statement. So make it personal. Make sure it's something that I didn't know about you. Don't say that I graduated from med school, I met this and that, I had done this or that, because all of this is mentioned in your um, application, right? Make it personable. Make it who you are. Something that will be memorable for the program director whenever they are reading your application. It's like, oh wow, this is the applicant who actually had encountered this and that, or who happened to be this and that, or who has such and such circumstances during their process. And this makes you more unique and more competitive than anyone else. All right, my friends, thanks for bearing with me. I wish you all the best. And if you like any of these items, let me know and we can talk in details about it. And I'll be more than happy to assist you. Good luck.